Hello, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This time we are looking at the Dodge Burn and Sponge tools. So let's head over into Affinity. The photo I'm working on is of uh, three parasols in Saint Martin um, in uh, the Caribbean. And the problem with the image is that the sky is a little bit too bright. It's not as saturated as I would like. And we've got uh, deeper areas under the parasols uh, and under the uh, sun loungers, which I'd like to lighten up just a little bit. So the tools we're using are here, dodge brush, burn brush, and sponge brush. Now these are all named after techniques from the darkroom days, uh, where you would literally prevent light from hitting sections of um, a, a, an image, or you would put extra light on there to, to burn in, or use a sponge to affect um, certain parts of the image as well. The digital versions of them are quite straightforward. The dodge brush lightens areas. The burn brush will, um, will darken areas and the sponge tool will increase the saturation or decrease the saturation uh, on your image. So we're going to start off with the sky. We want to make it a little bit darker, so I'm going to use the burn brush tool. In my previous video, I explained about brushes. So if you haven't seen that already, I, I recommend you take a look at it. The link is somewhere uh, up there. In terms of the settings, I want quite a, a large brush for this. So I'm using the uh, square bracket key to, to do that. And we want a very soft brush. So set the hardness down to zero and then opacity and flow. Now, there's lots of different ways you can work with these and it's really down to personal preference. For this image, one of the ways I would like to work on it is to use a sort of round about 50% opacity. So I'm gonna set it to 50% on there. And I'm going to keep the, the flow down low, round about 10%. And what that will allow me to do is the opacity means I don't get the full effect of the um, of the burn tool and the flow allows me to really build it up by going over and over at, with a single mouse click over the area. If I still want to go darker after that, I can release the mouse click and go over it again. So it gives me a lot of control over what I'm doing. Before I start painting on the uh, on the canvas, I'm going to duplicate my image so that I can do a before and after. So control and J gives me a duplicate. I will work on the, the top version of that. Now I can take the brush with the settings um, I've chosen and I can start to paint in. And as I go over it, you should start to see things begin to darken in these areas. And I prefer to do it this sort of way where I take my time just to build in the darkness gradually and bring out those detail and just do it slowly until it all starts to come into, into play. Take the brush down a little bit just to capture the sections down here. And I quite like having this area here quite dark there, almost as though it's the underside of the clouds maybe a little bit of rain cloud coming in. And you can see I've brought in most of the detail now of those clouds, which weren't there before. Before and after, quite straightforward. If I just turn off this layer, you can see before and after how I've brought in that extra detail on the, uh, the cloud area. So now with the, that layer still active, I'm going to next try and bring in some lighten up the shadows down below the parasols. For that, I'm going to use the dodge tool. Because of the, the effect of this, I like to have a, a slightly higher flow uh, for this. So I'm gonna go up to, let's say 30%, which means I get a little bit more through. So again, I can now start painting on here and go over it a few times and 
just do multiple passes, releasing the mouse occasionally to allow me to start up a new layer on there. And a little bit over here, bring it along. And it's, it's actually quite tricky to see the effect of it. Make the brush a little bit smaller so I can concentrate just on the darker areas uh, of this and particularly underneath those sun loungers. I really want to lighten those bits up on there. And of course under the parasols as well, particularly the blue one and the green. Try and bring that out and bring a little bit more of that red one out there. Again, we can see the effects of this by just turning off that top layer and seeing the original image underneath. So looking at the parasols and the, uh, you can see particularly with the blue, how I've lightened that up. A little bit more, a little bit more over here on the green parasols and the red parasols. Let's try and get the those darker areas a bit lighter than they were. So again, before and after on there, you can see how that's had an effect. And the eyes now drawn more to those, uh, those loungers. But the sky could do with being a little bit more saturated. So that's where our third tool comes in, which is the sponge brush tool. And what that does is it allows us to add in a little bit of saturation to the image. We've got options to either saturate or desaturate, and we can use either vibrance or uh, HSL saturation. So what's the difference between them? Well, saturate and desaturate is very obvious. So I want to add saturation. So I click on that, already selected actually. And vibrance is the intelligent saturation where it tends to tries to protect skin tones. It tries to just deal with the desaturated area. So it's the sort of clever version of saturation. So that's probably sufficient for what we want. Again, I'm going to work with a large brush. So the square bracket key, and I should be able to start just painting in a little bit of vibrance over on this blue sections. And you can see it is just getting that little bit more saturated as I carry on with this. And just try and bring in a bit of saturation there. Now, perhaps I think a little bit on the C as well. Don't need to put much on there, but just a, a fraction. But I would like to make the, the beach look more of that golden uh, color. So again, over here, just go over it a few times. And you can see how I'm building up that little bit of extra saturation there. Release the mouse and I can go again and that will just keep adding saturation and painting it in like that. So now again, let's look at the before and after with this. And there you can see that saturation's come in, that brightness has come in and that's our, our final image. But have you noticed there's a problem with this image? It's not a bad edit and it's showing you how to do it, but you can see underneath those uh, loungers that the sand has got a little bit brighter than perhaps it should. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to deal with that. The next video is all on the topic of non-destructive ways of doing dodge and burn. Here's the playlist for all the affinity ones and the video. So I'll see you in there. So thanks for watching and until then, keep making great photos. Bye for now.